In this video, we're going to be talking about position vectors and a simple but important idea on our path to learning about vector geometry. Okay, so firstly, what are position vectors? Well, if we have a point such as this one, A, which is at 3, 4 on our uh, two-dimensional plane, then the position vector is simply the vector from the origin at OO to that point. So it's a vector representing the position of that point. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, and what position vectors allow you to do, this is the simple but important idea that I was talking about, is if you have two position vectors, or if you have two points and their position vectors, then you can find the vector from point A to point B in this case, or between those two points, um, using the triangle law. Uh, so we learn about the triangle law in GCSEs. So this vector here would be AB. Um, and what would this vector be? Well, we can start by saying something like, well, AB, if we're going from A to B, that would be, uh, that would be, let's write it down. Vector AB would be AO. So let's call the point of origin O. That would be AO plus OB. Okay, but typically the way we actually want to write this is in terms of the position vectors, you know, going the other way, so from O to A. Uh, why is this? Well, just generally because we write the position vector OA, you know, going in one direction. So we really want to write this as negative, uh, negative OA plus OB. So instead of going from A to O, we're going the other way. This is, you might say, okay, this isn't really important. I'm just, you know, there's really no difference here. It's just a slight level of, of abstraction away from the triangle law and the way you learn to add vectors in GCSEs. Um, and it's just a little step on the way to learning more about vectors. That's why I said it's a simple idea, but it is important uh, because once you start working with, you know, finding vectors with this, uh, in this way, and you get used to that. So we're going to write that as OB take OA. Uh, it just becomes a bit quicker and a bit faster and, and allows you to be more efficient. So once you get used to this, uh, if you're given two points, uh, then you can find the vector between those points using this formula here. So OB take OA or whichever uh, vectors you're, look, you're using at the time. Okay, let's do a couple of examples just to get used to this. So let's say you have uh, points A. Uh, A is 3, negative 1. B is 4, 5. And C is negative 2, 6. And you want to find firstly their position vectors and then the vectors AB and AC. So the position vectors are pretty straightforward. So the position vector of A is simply OA, which is, uh, now you can write this in two ways. You could write it as a column vector like this. So you've gone across three and down one to represent the vector from the origin to that point A. Hopefully that makes sense. You could also write it as three I uh, take J. That's that IJ notation we talked about in a previous video. OB, hopefully you can tell me what that would be. That would be 4i plus 5j. And again, you could write that as a column vector. And OC is negative 2i plus 6j. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Just writing down the position vectors. Again, how far you go across and down or up in terms of the x and y coordinates. And now we want to find, for example, uh, AB using that formula we just talked about. Uh, so the order is important. Uh, if you notice, uh, the end of this vector is B, so we're doing OB take OA. If we went the other way, BA, it would be OA take OB. So if we're, if we're going from A to B, then we need to do OB take OA. So I kind of think of that as like, the end point subtract the starting point. I mean, that's not technically correct, but just 
just be aware of the order is basically what I'm saying. Okay, so now we just use the vectors we found. Uh, so that's 4i plus 5j, subtract 3i take j. And then we're just doing 4 take 3, which is i, and 5 plus 1, which is plus 6j. Okay, then we might want to also find BC. Okay, so BC, remember that the we're going from B to C, so we're going to do OC subtract OB, and then just pretty straightforward arithmetic from this point on. So negative 2i plus 6j subtract 4i plus 5j. I always put the brackets around the second one just so I don't mess up with any negatives. So that's negative 6i and 6 take 5 is plus j. Okay, so that's how you're working with this, um, this new formula. I mean, it's not really that new, but it's, it's as I said, an extra level of, of abstraction. Okay, let's do some problem solving questions. So this one says, O, A, B, C, D is a regular hexagon. The points A and B are position vectors A and B respectively, where O is the origin. Find in terms of A and B the position vectors of C, D, and E. Okay, I encourage you to draw a diagram if they don't give you one for a question like this where it's, you know, uh, involving shapes and you kind of want to know what it looks like. So we have the regular hexagon starting at O and uh, you know going around. We could go down, we could go to the side. I'm just going to go in this direction. Uh, there's no nothing in the question saying this is how it would look, but that's just how I feel like drawing it. And I'm going to draw, try to draw as regular a hexagon as I can. It's not going to be perfect, but it's just a sketch. Okay. All right. That's the regular hexagon. And we have uh, A and B. These are these two points. They have position vectors A and B. So one edge of the hexagon is vector A. And then we also have a vector 2B from the origin. And that's vector B. Okay. And these other points are C, D, E and O. Okay, we need to find in terms of A and B the position vectors of C, D and E. So firstly starting at C and that should be on the axis there. Okay, how are we going to find OC in terms of A and B? Uh, well, the first thing I want to try to find is AB in terms of A and B just because that's what we've been doing so far. So can we find the vector AB in terms of A and B for part A. Okay, so vector AB, well we can, right? Uh, that's the vector going to the end point, subtract the vector going to the starting point. So that's just going to be B take A. Okay, now I have AB, uh, can I somehow get to C? We could look for BC um, and there is a couple ways to do this. Uh, there's also a little shortcut if you know about your hexagon geometry and that is that the long diagonal going from one vertex to another vertex through the center of the hexagon that is twice the length of the edge of the hexagon. So there's a really neat shortcut here you can use and simply say that uh, OC is 2 B take A. Again, because that length is twice the length of the edge. And we found AB in terms of B and A, which is the edge of the hexagon. Um, so I'll just write a little note here saying how I found that. Okay, so that's OC. Um, uh, so that's a position vector of C, which is OC. Um, and I guess we could also expand that out and say it's 2B take 2A. Okay, now we need D. D in terms of A and B. Um, and for this, I think I want to go from C to D. Now, in a regular hexagon, the edges are parallel. So CD would be parallel to, to OA. And that means we know that uh, DC is, the, is also the vector A. So if we're going from C to D, that would be negative A. 
So uh, to get to OD, we just need to do OC plus uh, CD. Okay, or we could have done done it the other way around. Okay, so that's 2B take 2A, and then CD is just negative A. So that's going to be uh, 2B take 3A. All right, and then the last one is E, and we know DE is, sorry, ED would be B take A, same as AB. So then we just need to keep going around from D to E. So let's scroll down a bit. Then OE is going to be OD, which we just found, plus uh, DE. Okay, and then um, OD was 2B take 3A, and DE is negative uh, I did this a bit funny, uh, negative, or in other words, A take B basically, uh, A take B, all right? And then this is going to be uh, 2B take B is B, and then negative 3A plus A is negative 2A. Okay, so that was you know, a fairly interesting problem solving question involving position vectors, and let's do one more. So this question says, the position vectors of three vertices of a parallelogram are four, two, three, five, and eight, six. Find the possible position vectors of the fourth vertex. I'll just shrink this a little bit. Okay, so let's again draw a little diagram and plot these points. So we've got a point at four, two, which would be something like here. 3, 5, maybe about here, something like that, and 8, 6, so something like that. Okay, uh, and we need to think about how many different parallelograms we could create with these three points. So the one that jumped out at me first was if there's a point over here somewhere, we could draw almost like a rectangle, or it looks like a rectangle on my diagram, but it might not look like that if these points were accurate. Okay, but is there anything else we could do? Well, if we drew, if we joined uh, these two points, we could actually extend this line up this way and create another parallelogram. Okay. Um, uh, I should have said, give this question a go if you if you want, if you're feeling confident, um, and see how many parallelograms you can draw with these three points. So pause the video. Okay, hopefully you had a go at that, and you found one more. So there are three different parallelograms you can draw. Um, so the other one is if we joined these two points, and actually it looks almost the same, but then we would have a point down here somewhere, right? And then that would be the third parallelogram. Okay, so we have three possible solutions here. Um, and so let's go ahead and find what they are. Let's call this point A. This was at four, two. Let's call this point B. This was at eight, six. And let's call this point C. Oops, I messed up. This was at 3, 5, wasn't it? This was at 3, 5, and C was at 4, 2. Okay, so let's solve this point first. Uh, let's call that D, E, and F. So C, D is going to be uh, parallel to A, B. So if we find A, B first, um, then we can find C, D, and we can find point D. So AB is just the difference between the coordinates, right? That's pretty straightforward. Yeah, so we just subtract. So we've got eight take three, which is five, and then six take five, which is one. Okay, so then that would also equal CD. And then D is just going to be adding those to C. 
So uh, D then is going to equal 4 plus 5, which is 9, and 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay, that's D. Then let's find um, C. Uh, let's do the yellow one, actually. Let's find C, B, and then we find E. So C, B. That's going to be uh, 4 going across 4 and up 4, right? The difference between the two. And that also equals AE. And then so E is equal to, uh, if we add those to A, that's going to be 7, 9. Also, it's important to differentiate between vectors and points when you're talking about Position vectors, it's easy to get mixed up there. Okay, last one, F, uh, we've got CB, so FA would be the same as CB, and we need to uh, go the other way. So subtract four, four from three, five. Um, and that means I should have drawn it out here somewhere actually, because F, if we subtract four from three, we get negative one, and then five take four is one. So they are the three solutions, nine, three, seven, nine, and negative one, one. Congratulations if you got those yourself. Okay, so that's position vectors. As I said, simple but important idea. You, once you start working on vectors and vectors, vector geometry, you will be using this a lot and you realize, hey, this is actually pretty useful. Okay, so hope you found that video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.